I'd like to call the meeting to order. Mike, could you please call roll? Ms. Benecki. Dr. Brown. Here. Mr. Essenblair. Here. Ms. Hope. Here. Ms. Hollingworth. Mr. Knuckles. Ms. Paoli. Here. Vice President Hogerl. Here. President Crooked. Here. Please stand for the pledge. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Mike, could you please read the statement concerning open public meetings? Public notice of this meeting pursuant to the Open Public Meetings Act has been given by the superintendent of schools in the following manner. On January 10, 2023, notice of this meeting was posted on the interior of the school administration offices, 95 Grove Street, Haddonfield. Written notice was submitted and filed with the Haddonfield Borough Clerk, and notices were emailed to the Courier Post and the Retrospect newspaper. Okay, thank you. Um, we'll get started today with uh, presentate with the presentation from Mr. Klaus on the National Clearinghouse graduation data. Um, so uh, we we've done this um, time and again. I think the third or fourth year, and actually uh, my predecessor actually uh, mostly started this. So National Public Clearinghouse, we're, we're tracking our students after they graduate. Um, and see what, what happens, where they go, and, and all the wonderful things. Um, and, and what the NASA, what this is, NASA Clearinghouse is, is a nonprofit that's, that tracks students through their college careers. Um, we apply, we support, we subscribe to a service called Student Tracker, and that this is what it does. It tells how many kids go to high school. Um, if they persist, and year one to year two is a big factor in a lot of things. If you see high school and you look at people looking for high school searching, retention after year one is a big factor people look at. Um, how long for the state for them to get degrees? If they get a degree, it gives us in or out of state, private or public, those type of data, that type of data, two or four years, and, and it tells us what, what schools most commonly attend. So one of the questions I, I'm going to ask as we go through this is, what more do we want? Because we get student tracker. If we upgrade, we can get outreach, which gives us things like majors, right? So right now, I'll get I'll, every grade level, every class, the class of 2013, I can, I can get all the information. If this is all, all of this, as you see, um, it tracks the students, it shows um, efforts at 90%, it has these huge covers, and it's all FERPA, right? So all, all these reports I'm going to show are all FERPA, so there's, there's no data. That, that when, we, when we look at demographic data, that's one of the things that you see for us is, the end number is 20, so our demographic data, all we really get is male and female, right, because of our population. Um, but we don't get things like majors. We don't get what degrees people receive. If we were to get the next level, we could get that information. So what we show this, it's almost the same every year, so it's kind of interesting yet boring. If you remember well enough from last year, it's going to look very similar. But I look at these things, if we, if we start looking at majors, and transfers and those type of things that might give us more to talk about in a more interesting fashion. And a good example would be if we knew that we had 20 kids a year majoring in business, and our business program is one person teaching financial literacy and some entrepreneurial courses and say, well, we have a pretty good 10% of our kids going to business. We need to change our business program. I think that type of data could be more informative. And so what I, what I want to talk about is what else might we want to get out of this? Because right now we're just getting 97% go to college and 85% graduate. That's all we're kind of getting. And so while it's interesting to look at, I don't think we're using this tool as well as we could. Now, that being said, I could go back and actually look at these things and try to manually figure it out. But the way it works is, if you were to take my data from when I was in college, right, it would be Chuck Klaus, Purdue University Psychology, Purdue University Psychology, Boston University Education, I'm eight lines of data because it goes by semester. We have 200 kids because it's 1,600 lines of data per class. So it's too much for me. I, 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 not too much for me, but I don't have the time to go through and do that work. They can do that for us. And so um, what, what, what we need to figure out is do we want to get an invention to that or not? I'll probably sit down with my counselors at the high school and say, would this be useful for you guys to have? Then we can do it. But as I said, I think the, I think the example of what, what our majors are 
is, is a really powerful thing. Is, is there a cost associated with that? It's like six hundred to a thousand dollar type of thing. It's not much more than we're paying right now. Like this is the entry level. The add-ons are cheaper as we go up. Um, so yeah. there is a cost, and that's why we'll just. I mean, if it was free, I would just jump on right away. Because right? I was just going to say the way you described it, it sounded like a simple pivot table if people know how to do that in Excel. But for six hundred to a thousand dollars, that seems like it's well worth. Right. It's not much money for what you're getting. Right. Yeah. We don't get our majors in here. I see who that diplomas. Okay. And and what the more, basic more what the plum it is, the the majors that comes with the different package, okay. and those type of things. So it's, it is it is that. So I, I actually was going to start June I, like on Monday. I was like, let me just sort by diploma, and I'll just count them, right or sort by the other thing. It does well. It shows you your schools as you transfer. So mine would be Chuck Klaus Purdue one, Chuck Klaus Purdue one, Boston University two. So it shows the numbers your different school. Right. Um, so some people would go one to five. Like you can see one to five. Like, I'll swear by that. It's like I'm looking at. I'm like, oh, by the way, this is only class 2013. I still have six more years to go beyond. I'm like, I'm, I'm not doing it. Um, but I think this would be worthwhile looking deeper into that. So that's one of the things I want to point out to you, Doctor. You know, if if we are willing to look at our offerings, our class offerings based on major, I think that that would be very powerful. And then another thing that, that um, you said is I want to sit down with the counselors because I think that there's so much attention put on like who's going to the, the, the brand name school um, and that's not really what is that happy and why might it's, be valuable. <laughs> what do we, are we finding the right fit? Are counselors working to get the right fit? That's the focus that we need, not on getting the brand name. And that's where the transfer data is. Yeah. Right. There's yeah. a lot of reasons why people transfer. Yeah. Sometimes economic, sometimes I'm, I'm homesick. But I mean, that's where that data, we don't, I mean, so we can go through thousands, thousands of thousands to see where two is and see who transferred where. Um, but I, I think that that's important. That's why I want to preface this by saying we're using this, like, my, like I use a computer. I use like the word processor. I don't really use a computer that well. But there's things you can do I could never even imagine. Or my smartphone. Every so car. I have a, are, yeah, yeah. I have an electric car. I just drive. It does all kinds of things. <laughs> so I'm always scratching the surface. And that's one of the things I want to talk about to start this off is what you're going to see is interesting and it's, and it's really and it's really good news because the whole thing you as for being in this building as a teacher for years, everyone goes away to college, but they never stay at college. That's that's the rumor, but that's not the case. We're going to see that. But I wanted to say. We need, I think this is a tool we need to invest in more and dig deeper into and bring that information back that can really be beneficial to our process. Yeah, I, I mean, I think everyone has already said it, but I think the transfer data is really important. Yeah. I know at least, I mean, probably it was COVID related for a lot of people, the 2020 class, there were tons no, of kids that transferred. So if we see that as a trend more than just right. that year, then I think And, and just scanning the spreadsheet, there's a lot of transfers. Yeah. Or people taking time away from college, and I don't necessarily view that as a bad thing. Right. But personally, I've been so grateful at the number of families who've shared their stories with me because if I ever face that with my ch with my children, then you don't feel like you're the only one doing it. You realize that this is something to, you know, consider what's the best move for them given whatever's going on. Yeah, and arming our, our counselors who are fabulous, and our counselors do a fabulous job. Arming them with even more knowledge, more information uh, to help our kids. I think that. Chuck, is there anything in the database that says after the degree is attained that you're getting a job, or is it end? This is ends in education. So if you go to law school or medical school, they track that, yeah. but they're not tracking employment after that. Gotcha. So well, here we go. This is this is what we're looking at seeing, right? So this is, and it, they work on a six-year graduation rate. So. Graduation rates are four, five, or six years they work on. Um, I assume that's because college is going to make more money, so you stay for six years. I'm not going to, I should probably should have said it cynical, but um, anyway, that's so they do work on so a six year look better, right? So colleges look better, right? Yeah. So colleges look better. And sometimes it takes people six years. Yeah. Right. The other thing I was going to say about the majors is a lot of students change their mind. Correct. And so do we get to see major by semester? That I believe might do, be yes. more interesting. Mm -hmm. But I also think not like catering the high school curriculum to be towards a major. I think that's a mistake because kids change their mind, but right. keeping in mind, like these are the kinds of majors graduating classes are interested in and making sure, you know, like our right, curriculum right. is 
wide. So but they're I, exposed, exposed, mm -hmm. exposed. So then they can hopefully get to their decision. I, I think another good example would be, um, like if we have 20, although that being said, I agree. Yeah. If we have, I'm pulling 20, I don't right. know if that's the case, going to business, and there's no economic, AP economic course or that right. type of thing, like we are really unserving, not yeah. doing a disservice to our population. Right. The other thing I think we find is would be interesting is that we probably have an extraordinary number of students going to environmental science programs compared to a school in any direction, right? right. Our, our percentage of that, and schools like University of Vermont is one of our most popular schools. Like why is what's why are we going to Vermont? Right. That's all that's all interconnected with that major change, right? Um, so I think that type of stuff helps would help show where. Where, where that's yeah. great. So. And I think too, I can't speak for like University of Vermont, but I would bet if you reached out to some admissions offices, not in the crazy season, mm -hmm. <laughs> like, you, I can, we can brainstorm about when that might be because they really are year round crazy, yeah. but um, because they might tell you things that they often see are hang ups for first year students at right. their school, right? Like they can say g general things. Do you know what I mean? And might be interested in partnering more with secondary schools to think about, like, how can we all do better to help students? On, yeah. on the data you can get, and forgive me if you said this earlier and I missed it, can you see, without seeing names, like, anonymously, like, the, your kids that went to Rutgers or your kids that went to St. Joe's, this was the average grade point average at the end of the year, or, or is it because we're too small? I don't get GPAs. Yeah. I just got It'd just be nice part. to know if you, I've heard from a lot of parents that were phenomenal in preparing our kids mm -hmm. for their English classes That's and writing compared to other high school students. But some of the other classes, not that our teachers aren't fabulous, but, um, you know, it, stuff like that could tell you where should we try to look I agree. at other. I agree. Yeah. Right. And, and I, when I was a high school principal, this is old that it's 10 years old. So I probably shouldn't say it because it's obviously outdated. I asked like a, Confidence thing. Going away to I, I I I surveyed four years of graduates. Where you feel, where did you feel best prepared, and where did you feel least? And English was far and away the place that was the best, and math was the lowest of those were the four major areas. Um, but that's that is that same type of data, right? So we can survey students like that, but this won't give us GPA and that type of stuff. Yeah, yeah it might be interesting because I know we've done the post graduation surveys, but to do that from the class that just graduated and ask them, like self-reporting and anonymous, right. but like, what classes were you struggling? What class, did you pass the OccuPlace or even something like that, uh, you know? I can just be. still tell you English was rough for me coming from public high school to like half the class came from Andover and show, and that was really hard. Yeah, it sounds like the Haddonfield kids might have fared better, but it was <laughs> still a harsh memory they 23 do. years do. later. Yeah. So, Anecdotally, I, I know <laughs> that there are students that are in college and there are other people saying to them, how do you know this stuff? And they're saying, I didn't believe it. Oh, lucky. <laughs> <laughs> so, so this is our college acceptance and you know, the, the anomaly here, because it's cut off, we don't have the 2020, 21, 2020 data yet. Mm -hmm. We had a mid-year graduation, um, so 2019 is one student. I probably shouldn't be showing this because if you know who the graduate is, you know that he's in college and doing well, and that's fine. That's fine. <laughs> it would be different if it didn't look like that, I guess. Um, so and then, cuts off, Jen. It cuts off in December. Cuts off, yeah. I, mean, I can't see very well. Could, oh, I'm sorry. I was just going to say, you're on the next slide. Can you just say what's on the like x-axis and y-axis? Okay, so this is like right. So this is the demographic. Um, number of students going to college. Um, so we can see here that, um, through, like in 2000, the, the, the green is, is, is male, red is female. We can see the, the numbers, and there's slightly um, higher numbers. I think roughly say about 94, 95%, both male and female attending college. The other thing to notice is, you just notice this is page eight of 31. I combined two of their, two of their, two of their um, reports. The other is 48 pages, so there's 100 pages of this, roughly 100 pages of this data, not a math person, 90 pages of data. We, we can upload those or I can share them with everyone, um, but it, it, it's just breaking down nuances in the, in, in the work. Um, this is uh, enrolled during, after the first year, so you can see that some people are supposed to include gap year people in this, so it's a little higher, so you see it's between nine, 93 is like the lowest percent, but 97 is what, roughly where we run. This is two and four-year colleges. 
Um, this is the demographic. Once again, same slide um, enrolled during the after within the first year of high school. And once again, the, the, the males are slightly lower than females now, but they're also about than 90 percent. Um, this is six degrees. So this is having a diploma within six years. Um, so we are roughly 80, 80 to 85 percent of our students after within six years get a diploma from college. Not necessarily where they went to college, but they get a college diploma. How does that compare to like a statewide average and then national average? I'm assuming it's very favorable. That's not 85 percent of the students who go to college. It's 85 percent of our population. So this includes students who did not go to college. Oh, okay. Right. So that's so the so the three percent who didn't go to college are also included in this number. And I'll show you more detail. We don't. I I I may be stating the obvious, or people may have different views, but I mean, with eighty-five percent, that's such a high number. Like, there are, I know people who haven't gone to college that are incredibly successful. So, for me, personally, like, I don't think college is for everyone. I don't know where that cutoff is, but I wouldn't necessarily say, oh, we got to get to ninety-five percent, or we have to get to ninety. Right. Right. Maybe we have to improve a little bit, but maybe I, that number is just fine where it is. I think the other, the first part of your statement might be the better. Like, not everyone. Needs to go to college. Needs to go to college. Wants to go to college, right? right? Mm -hmm. And I can speak from my own experience. I, I'm sure my son will mind telling you. He hates school. He went to college. He went to school here. So yeah, I go to college. I'm like, we spent a lot of money. The only school. Then he, he left college. Um, he went to uh, Vaughan Aerotech in, up in, uh, in Queens and became a. Now he's a, he's a mechanic at Boeing. Put a welder in his hand. He's never been happier in his life, right? So <laughs> we don't have that exposure for students here. Right. Um, I'm talking to some people about how maybe that may happen. Is had in town, just adding some of these things back into our curriculum. But I mean, it is hard if you, you can only what is it, you call it dream what you've seen, right? And so they don't know that. But once once we talk once we talk, talk through, we said, hey, you should try this. He was never happier at school, and and so now he's doing very well, and he's got a great job out in Tacoma. Um, and when he comes home for a weekend, he sees me for 90 minutes hanging out with his friends. That's, 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 that's not here now. Do we have similar data? I mean, I know the overwhelming majority of our kids are going to college now, but do we have data on the amount that are interested in the skill trades or in some I mean, other we, educational I pursuits? don't know if we have any good data, just kind of, just kind of. I mean, we did have a student go directly into trade school last year for auto mechanics and that, um, and we have, I've seen in my in in the spreadsheets, it does have students who go into trade schools mm -hmm. using that first thing for the second step. So we have some of that, but I don't have any hard numbers I can say what that looks like. That is, that is a cultural shift, though, right? I mean, you're in a place where everyone goes to college, you want to go to college. Um, and this is this is the uh, degree, six years. You can see that um, our, our female students um, in the last couple of years are about 90% getting diplomas, and our male students are about 80% getting diplomas. Yeah, in six years. So this is where, um, once again, this is six years, um, how they graduated, right? So so you see the orange who graduated in four years, the blue in five, and the yellow top in six. So that's that's how long it's taking our students to progress through college. I'm going to tell you it's 62% getting it in, well, you see some three years or probably two-year schools, right? Um, but I'm going to tell you that 62% getting out, getting through college in four years is really pretty impressive. Um, I don't have the, the statewide data, but that's that definitely is definitely worse than that. I know yeah, that. Yeah, that's, that's, that's important. Four years is tight. If a lot of kids are even double majoring now. So oh, yeah. yeah. When you yeah. study abroad and you got to make up classes. So, although a lot of kids are going in with um, AP, I was going to say that, that, that I know huge. a couple of people who graduated in three years because of all of the. Yep. I gotta be honest though, like from personal point, my daughter took a lot of AP classes and she got fours in the test, and none of the schools would accept them. Depends on the school. You know what they because accept they're more? They're Another instance, it's it, she's gonna graduate a semester early because yeah. of the classes. So or the dual, no, I mean, dual say credit that ones, I feel like they accept more yeah. than yeah. the AP. Yeah. Which is I mean, it's a, like, it I, I know ours accepted. Though. Yeah, it, it depends on the school, but I mean, I mean it's also a reason why yeah. AP classes, it, people don't have to take AP classes, but there's real value, real, real value for some people to take it. So I think that we, we shouldn't, we should, um, well, people should, yeah. exactly. If you're going to yeah. be an engineer and you're going to Drexel, 
they don't care about calculus. Yeah, you're yeah. taking calculus yeah. Yeah. without a calculator. Yeah, yeah. Really yeah. That's, that's kind of that part for the go <laughs> side. Um, so this is the class of 2012. And this, I mean, I'm not. I'll show you one of these. I'm, I have the next four years of it. You're going to see the same trend, right? So uh, you see far left. It's 12, 13. You had 93.4 percent started school, right? And then the orange are those who persisted. And you'll notice that in the 13, 14, you had more students go to school, so they didn't just come right out of high school. They they took a year for X, Y, or Z and joined in. And the orange is persisting, and the purple, I guess that's purple, is graduation. Um, the top are, are the that dark blue are people who never entered the clearinghouse for whatever reason. Either they were in one of the three percent schools who are in the clearinghouse, or they didn't enter college at all. If they went into the military or, or, or another or right into the workforce. Um, and that, that 10%, that, that yellowish piece there uh, are those who did not graduate. So they started school and did not graduate. So that gives you a really pretty good picture of how our students progress through school over time. Um, and what you're going to see is class of 13 looks very similar. 14, very similar. So this, this is why this is neat, but it's also a little not boring because it's good stuff, right? But, but it's also not not giving us, I think, what we want to get. There's only so many like trends you can right. take. Yeah. yeah. This is not giving us what we want to get. This is my bottom line. That's why I, I think we need to start looking at deep, thinking deeper into what the National Clearinghouse can do for us, and maybe what we can what we can dig out of that. that, that. So this is this is a class of uh, of eighteen, and you can see we already have almost sixty percent of class of eighteen graduate college. Um, and then this is most common, and this is over. From 2012 to 18, the most common schools, as you would expect, Rutgers and Rowan are at the top. College of New Jersey, already state schools are, are the highest ranking. Um, then you have St. Joe's, Delaware, Drexel, Cayman County. Cayman County, at one point, was our most popular school for a long time. Um, I'm not sure why it's not up there any longer, um, but there was a time in, in the early 2010s that would have been top two or three do they still do the scholarship where if you start at community college you get tuition junior senior year they have so they saw those programs okay. i don't i'm not sure exactly how they still work but they still do like those programs then we come out we ran with up the university of pennsylvania and and penn state and temple and and, and the, the top so chuck that what's on that slide there you guys used to provide it every year like in the summertime to the board um we still post on our website the college, kids go to college. Oh, we can find it on the yeah. website. Yeah. Um, it's just, it doesn't, it's just alphabetic uh, of colleges that kids go to. It's not, you know. I, I always feel like when I see that, it's helpful to me just as a parent. Sometimes I, I see schools that I didn't initially consider, and I'm always trying to make sure I didn't miss something before we whittled down our list. Right. So, and as I said, like Vermont is one I, as much as I, know this place I wasn't I that one always shocked me um uh, the other one is uh Fordham um and and actually Pittsburgh is the one I didn't know we had anyone go to Pittsburgh and yet here it is it's, it's in our top 25 that, that we go to so this will be posted on the website and what I can do I can even post the full two reports on the post next year so if anyone take a deep dive into it but as I said in the demographic one it's kind of boring because more than half the slangs it's like Intentionally left blank because if we're looking at number of uh, African American students, it's below the twenty. There's no end number. They don't. They don't show it. So there's no data. So we can't. Re we have it. We can't report that data. Otherwise, it's identifiable measures. Yeah. Um, and so that's just a quick look at um, where we are in the clearinghouse and I, I, I and the fact that I think we're going to try to dig deeper into this by getting additional services so we can look at things like majors and transfers and, and degrees, right? So how many kids are getting, you know, stat packs for science versus associates versus X, Y, or Z. And then they go, it will, it will as, as it's a great question. if you go to graduate school, it will track you through that. As long as you are in the system, oh, it, will it will track you. Okay. And there's nothing that would say, like the kids that don't go to college, there's no way to know what those no. kids end up doing. No. Yeah. This, not through this. this. We can probably try to do that or ourselves yeah. um but this is strictly and this is all tied in with financial aid and applications and those things um it could be something in the alumni association maybe mm -hmm. yeah we could look into something like because that. it does help the yeah. um, alma mater right mm -hmm. okay. so
So is there question. demographic information about um, students with IEPs, K-12, and how they do? Um, I do not know that they have class wide because okay. I don't, the reason why I don't believe that's in there is there are no IEPs in college. They should have 504s and it's all on the student to do it. So the yeah. students may not report it. So I'm not sure how reliable that data would be. Yeah. Okay. That's it. Okay. Thank you. Um, that was great. All right. Um, committee reports. Curriculum committee has not met yet. So we don't, I don't have anything. Uh, finance, we're going to meet next week, so I'll report next week, which I thought today was the voting session, and it's not. I was thinking of the 19th. Flash forward. Um, Greg, you didn't meet yet, right? No, we met next week. Okay. Um, policy? Yep, we met um, last Tuesday, the 3rd, and we discussed some policies that were recommended by Strauss Esme. They're on the agenda for first reading this month. Um, there's a new sick leave policy and regulation, both of which are mandatory and were drafted in response to New Jersey statutory revisions. And they significantly expand the scope of allowable uses of sick leave for all school district employees. Um, sick days may be used not just to care for oneself, but to care for family members, um, attend a child's school-related conference or other event requested by a school administrator or teacher after a death in the family, uh, to seek services after either the employee or family member was a victim of domestic or sexual violence, if they're quarantined or if their child's school or place of care is closed due to a public health emergency. So there were some big changes there. Um, we discussed the updated uh, religion and schools policy. This was updated in response to recently released guidance from the U.S. Department of Education on constitutionally protected prayer and religious expression. And it requires the board to annually certify in writing to the New Jersey Department of Ed that no board policy prevents or denies participation in constitutionally protected prayer. Uh, we discussed the new school threat assessment policy and regulation, both of which are mandated. You'll recall this was on the agenda in August for a first reading. And then we pulled it in September because Strauss was making some updates and crafting the new regulation. These were drafted in response to a New Jersey statute requiring the establishment of threat assessment teams in our schools for the purpose of identifying and assisting students who are at risk of engaging in violence or other harmful activities. Rob Fox joined our discussion. Uh, he confirmed that there were no substantive changes to the policy that we have all reviewed a couple times. Um, but the new regulation was developed to provide a step-by-step -step process for the district to follow when developing the program. We discussed an updated food services policy. This is a mandatory policy that was updated in response to statutory revisions and newly created statutes. It includes extensive revisions to our policy and addresses nutritional standards, free or reduced breakfast and lunch, summer food service program, information that must be provided to parents regarding meal programs, the application process for free or reduced meals, the provision of meals during school closures, and the details of our meal program. So all of these updates have been communicated to NutriServe, that there are a bunch of them. Um, in response to these new or amended policies, next week on the agenda, you'll see several policies for us to abolish. Um, our current sick leave policies for teachers and staff and our school nutrition program and meal charge policies will be irrelevant. Um, in addition, there will also be the policy referring to the bridge year pilot program. You'll remember that was created for the kids that were impacted by COVID. Um, and it should be abolished as the class of 2022, which would have completed their bridge year last year, was the last class eligible. Um, we also discussed the plagiarism policy, which was updated to include the use of artificial intelligence by students and it requires students to properly cite work attributed to AI. And then finally, the um, updated pupil fundraising policy, which was updated to prohibit door-to-door -door fundraising by students and to prohibit fundraising activities that award incentives to students for raising funds. 
Can I ask a quick question based on what you said? I have something yeah. specific to a different policy, but because the sick leave now includes bereavement, did we have separate bereavement days yes. in our contract? So will this now make those bereavement days go away, or is it seven? Is it that they can use these bereavement days in addition to the Correct. existing? Correct. Okay. Good line to you. Is that? No, same thing. Yeah. yeah. That's that's in the best of the year. That's correct. Right. So it's just what they days, can use it for. It doesn't give them like it does it change the total number of sick days? No. It's the same amount that they had before. It's it just more the flexibility. Of what yes. they can use all these things for. Do we think that's gonna significantly change utilizations that we're gonna see more subs? I mean I'd expect it would. I, I don't know that it will. Um I, I mean I, I think if if you look at our staff, you can probably count on one hand and have several fingers left over those who take advantage of things like that. So yeah. well, the inspector may be, um, you know, but the other side of it too is like, we've, we've tried to work with our staff. So if you have a conference for your child at school, we, tried, we would try to cover for you anyway. Yep. So this now just gives it another vehicle for that. I I, I, I know that there's, there's a fear that all of a sudden teachers are gonna stop going to work in these sick days. I don't believe that's gonna happen. I, um, I wouldn't I, I, believe them if they did. I mean, those um, circumstances all sound like perfectly legitimate yeah. reasons right. to need so, so I, I, a I, brief I, leave of absence for work. Yeah, just making sure that yeah. we're planning for. We're not yeah. panicking. Yeah, and that's actually true. It's not like we had. I, I think we had a humanistic practice, yeah. and this probably aligns the policy with, with the what we were doing. At the end, yeah. So, yeah. So, yeah. I have the the plagiarism. Um, so I understand policy is high level, and we're not going to go into the, the details and the procedures. Um, but is there going to be clarity about um, what does use of, of AI mean? So if I... <laughs> I did this in my own class this semester. Yeah, so I mean, if I use it and I then use it as a base, but then rewrite based on that, does that count? Is it if I use it exactly as is? What if, I mean, what constitutes at this point I need to cite this? So we, we, we talked a little bit about the gray area that will inevitably come from a policy like this. Um, I, I don't believe it is practical to address every scenario in a policy. For example, one of the things we talked about, you know, I said, well, if you use spell check, that's technically yep. AI. <laughs> yeah. um, and so there will definitely be a human element to this. So the spirit and intent of the policy is for, to hold students accountable, uh, to, to not represent work that is not their own as their own. And we're, 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 we're talking about um, developed ideas and whole scale chat GPT, write me a paragraph on the origin of what, uh, and passing that off as, as one's own. Um, and uh, also there's certainly in any kind of student academic integrity issue, the input of the uh, teacher, I think, is going to be really significant here. Our teachers know our students best, and we're trying to curb the potential use of you know, a, a student turning in work as their own that is a clear misrepresentation or not consistent with the, the work that the teacher knows the student and I understand the spirit of the policy completely. I guess what I'm trying to get to is, do the students understand the gray area? Mr. Licata was going around to the rooms to have a talk to be kind of consistent, right? right. He goes to so every classroom and talks to students about academic integrity and explain, in essence, the expectation. And he's using okay. this updated policy for this year's talk so okay. that he's, you know, and I'm. And I'm sure, like all things, it's going to evolve, but he is going around to all the classrooms to, to talk to the students and to, to clarify questions. I'm sure okay. he's going to get questions yeah. that are then going to maybe bring back and eventually next year, maybe what we can do. Or maybe we need a regulation to go along with it. Yeah, that's, right. that's, see, that's yeah, the thing. I think, I think that that's this is, that's exactly and, I, and I, I think it's hard to, to say, too, because as a teacher, there's like, 
Like if I were teaching an entry level English class, maybe I would have a couple papers where I was like, all right, it's, it's got to be kind of honor system, but no grammarly. I want to see, are you writing sentence structure? Are you catching your errors? But the classes I teach now, I'm like, don't submit your work unless you do grammarly. Like I want to, because- That's what you do in the workplace. That's what you do in the yeah. workplace, yeah. exactly. So, so I think that to have, I, I don't, what I'm guessing what I'm trying to say is I don't know if a catch all is going to benefit every class because they were they might be they might not be going for the same course i've been focusing with my students on you need to add value and if you if you're representing work that can just be done by a robot you're not bringing anything to the table so you're not going to be yeah. employable in five years like but that what, really is where we're what will be interesting that i didn't hear anybody say yet is just i hate to say how do you how do you prove that they used it i'll i'll, I'll tell you something else as a side note in foreign languages, which I, I love our foreign language, my son's had issues where she's like, she's saying I'm using Google Translate and I'm not. And and I, I speak the foreign language that my kids are studying. And he's like, I have no other idea how to say this. And I'll, I'll ask him questions in the language. And my point is, is he, he absolutely isn't. And I'm like, it just depends how many times it comes back to us before I actually reach out to the teacher. Because I don't have time to do that. But my point is that, you know, there's gentle accusations being made when it's not occurring. But so it'll just be interesting, like how, how far can you push it? Yeah. Well, Tur Turnitin, who's our plagiarism check, mm -hmm. will say this looks like it's artificial yeah. intelligence. It, yeah, but like in its, in its way of translation, like, like there's, there's a, a way of saying it versus like my point. Is, Look, yeah, whatever. I mean, ultimately, part of this has got to be educating about it, right? Because mm -hmm. AI is here, it's in our world, it's going to be part of what we do for the rest of our lives and whatever. Mm -hmm. um, and, and much like I, you know, if you look at even before AI, if you look at something like turning the plagiarism and check, there's got to be a point where the first the freshman sophomore year, maybe, okay, you just you did you made a mistake, right? Boom, boom, and then you have years to learn in that system, and then all of a sudden by your senior year, you should be making this mistake. This is a mistake you've been through, mm -hmm. and so I think it's going to probably look something like that as it evolves into how do we learn how to use it, and, and one of the things is we, we've learned is. Kids are using Chat GPT instead of Google because you Google they give you ten links. Chat GPT gives you the answer. Yeah, yep. right. So it's, very, it's a very it's quick step. It gives you a very confident. It's like yes, yeah, I was answer. like, it gives you a very confident, <laughs> very lengthy answer, but it's so often not right. But so you I love that our professor gets a judge in Texas that has now required as any submission to him, you have to submit a certification that says either you have not used generative artificial intelligence in drafting your submissions. Or if you have an actual human has gone back and looked at all the sites See, because of the issue of course, that's happened in multiple courts where they've hallucinated sites. And then, of course, what do you do if you've hallucinated sites? Why not double down and have ChatGPT write the reply for you, too? <laughs> and, and that's so, why I don't think that this is happening because it, it, it doesn't say you can't use it. It says you have to cite it. But I, I'm, I'm cautious that we don't want to villainize a tool. Well, no, it, it, it's using it for a draft, rewriting it, and then making it better, learning from that. There's nothing wrong with that, and that is what our world is going to As long as it's not a drafting class. Well, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and, and Linda, they can discuss it. I, I lean far more to your point of view on this, but like I could see how, as educators, you want the kids to learn the basics and the foundation, yeah. and then as they get in the more senior level classes, Honestly, if our kids don't know how to use ChatGPT and AI, they're not going to be as successful in the workplace. Yeah. In consulting, people use AI all the time, so you can get four times the amount of work done, but you have to go over it because if you get caught with something stupid on that paper, yeah, it's job threatening, you know? <laughs> This is not an easy one. Yeah. <laughs> and and it, yeah, I'm just thinking it's like a debate. Yeah. Oh, you know. There's copyright issues. Yeah. Maybe the kids should write I was <laughs> Yeah. Uh, anything else for policy? Um, Linda, do you have anything for LRFP? Uh, no, not that. No. Um, Meg is not here. So we'll just table student life committee because I know we, we didn't plan on not having Meg. Um, do you want to table that until next week? Um, and any PTA updates? PTA Lizzie's meeting soon. I'm gonna link up with them and she'll hopefully have an update. Great. I, I just wanted to touch base because I just recently looked it up. I wanted to make sure that, I don't know if everybody knows what PTA assignments they have because 
just in past years, I would get contacted by different PTA. We haven't had a board member show up all year, mm -hmm. so. Um, yeah, they go by gen, by calendar year, so whatever you were last. I, I know what I am. I just want oh, to make okay. sure that yeah, so. I don't know if everybody else like knows who's got you know what, so that. I do the Camden County. You do the Camden County one, but I was going to talk to you because okay, I'm doing a couple up. and yeah. I was going to see if you would take Tato. Okay. So we'll, we'll talk, talk about that. Yeah. I just had trouble getting to. Uh, the, yes. I don't know. But, um. Okay, let's get to that. Yeah. Um, so, <laughs> that's you. There was a, a middle school PTA meeting on October 2nd. Um, they are looking for a one-time project, um, and uh, you know they've had because of COVID, they have money that's been uh, accumulating, so they can't fund something that would be ongoing. But they are looking for a one-time project, and uh, they're thinking that they'll um, coordinate once the referendum scope is finalized, and then uh, identify a project from there. Um, potentially looking to re revitalize the locker rooms. They talked a lot about the, the locker rooms and they have been identified as an area that could use some, some love. So uh, perhaps uh, that's what they'll, they'll look at. Um, they're planning the um, veterans lunches, uh, the, the luncheon for Veterans Day. And I know that that's always gone over really, really well. Um, but what they talked about is they, they want to try and get outreach for new <coughs> people, new veterans, because, you know, we, it tends to be, you know, some of the, the older folks that have been coming every year um, and understanding we need to kind of cast a, a wider net and start getting other people. To, I know to a lot of elementary school parents that are veterans, so maybe just having those PTAs reach out to the elementary school PTAs. Yeah. Okay. That's a, I'll, I'll let them know that. So they're, they're going to try and, and uh, address that. But they, I think they're good for this year, but recognizing they need to, to go up a little bit deeper. And then um, Hamisi talked about um, what some of the, the, um, the, the uh, they have some initiatives that are addressing um, anti-bias and um, the no place for hate. And I think that, I mean, I was very interested in, in what's going on there because we here in uh, this meeting, we talk about the HIVs, we look at the, the reports um, as we should, but I think it's important to look at the flip side and look at what are we proactively doing to create a, a, a community of belonging. There are things going on just because we're not talking about them here doesn't mean that they're not going on. So. Um, here are a couple of things that, that they have outlined, that there are monthly community meetings um, where they're focusing on core values that are shared by the school and community, uh, looking for local community involvement uh, because there are community members who are interested in offering insight and guidance, um, seeking inspirational speakers. Uh, they're looking to have people come in and, and, and speak uh, about making Haddonfield a, a better place. Um, they have gotten the ADL No Place for Hate designation um, and holding themselves accountable to ADL standards and encouraging uh, themselves to continue addressing bias-related incidents. Classroom discussions on a classroom-by-classroom -classroom basis uh, where they're open and honest uh, about actions and, and um, pain that, that might have been caused by it. And then a guest speaker initiative where they're uh, going to have a new guest speakers from the local community who embody um, the values and in coming into the school. So good to hear the, the flip side of this is what, what our, our, our schools are doing to address this and create that community of belonging that we're, we're saying that we need. So. Linda, if they ever, which I think would be a great thing to consider for supplemental information at future board meetings, if the administration ever provides like a, um, a presentation on it, just documenting the different things that we're doing. It'd also be great to just explain how you get the no place for hate school designation. Mm -hmm. um, I, I actually had a parent contact me about that today, wondering what it really meant. And, you know, if it was a fluffy, like we're <laughs> NTA, if you know that abbreviation. <laughs> okay, look it up, Google it later. <laughs> But, but they're kind of like, what, what is this advertising? We're not the NTA, we're not the A. And they're like, what, what? And I said, no, we have to fulfill certain requirements and not all schools get this. And I thought it was important for the parents to understand what that does, that, that the designation was something meaningful 
rather than just a fluffy, yeah, a fluffy. Uh, Everyone's yeah. yeah, yeah, <laughs> yeah. Yeah. yeah we'll, we'll do that. I could probably take a get it pretty close, but probably not do it justice because it yeah. does involve projects you have to show for the, the volume. Like it's not to, they can't be one shot projects; they have to be long term pieces. Missy mm -hmm. probably give this little overview, but. Um, do you want to cover real quick, Amici? Yeah, yeah, yeah. You're, you're kind of spot on. So there's some long-term projects that you have to do. But there's also some individual like lessons um, that are, you know, themed around. We kind of themed around some of our SEL stuff, which is just accepting, being kind, um, and including everyone. Um, and so, you know, this year we're kind of just picking back on that, trying to continue those lessons, being just being more inclusive of everyone. Thank you. Um, any other PTA updates? All right. Um, regulations for board review. We have um, 2312, which is class size, and 9191, which are booster clubs. Um, assistant superintendent report, do you have anything, Dr. Priola? Um, Mr. Klaus, do you have anything? Uh, just quickly um, on Tuesday. Wednesday, Wednesday, um, we had the PSAT in high school, over 600 students at the PSAT. Um, Mr. Ricotta did a great job putting it all together and having it pull off. Of course, this was the first time nationally it was computer, it was computer and the college board site crashed. So oh, right. um, we got it on in waves. Like it wasn't all 600 at once. And you got 100 got it on and then another 100, another 100. Um, and, and luckily, the way the day was planned, they had flexible timing. You know, if if they were on a very rigid schedule, so this, because it was the first time on on the computer, they had more flexibility. But knowing now that the computer take computer testing takes almost half the time as the Interesting. paper it test. Does. It's only yes. an hour and a half. And um, is that how long the PSAT was? Yeah. Was it just the hour and a half? Uh, maybe two, almost two hours, like in that range. But they were usually three hours mm -hmm. for the whole testing regime before. So they'll plan appropriately next year that. So no. 9th, 10th, and 11th, I'll take it with 11th being the ones for the NQMST. Correct. And starting in January, the new SAT takes over, and it's only digital, mm -hmm. and it's an hour and a half. So tell me, I know you just said this, the PSAT, they saw the questions on the computer, but they had to provide the answer. No, it was all computer. all computerized. When, when it was, before it was computerized, the paper tests were almost were three, three hours, hours whatever, yeah. we're about much less time than that. Um, and we have, the other thing is that, um, our experts will link it. The data people say the PSAT is the best best data you can give us is PSAT as far as standards what kids can and cannot do yeah. standard ones. Um, is it an adaptive test now? And that's why it's ninety minutes, so it's going to scale the questions based Correct. on the answer. So that based, based on where, where. So rather than give everyone three hours of all the questions, right. you get it's, just, it, it's targeting. It's yeah, I don't. I don't. I my own reservations. Yeah, I, I, do I don't. I mean, that's just I, I, I about like the robots or adaptive testing. Adaptive testing yeah. in a standardized format. Yeah. That's not standardized. So right. if you're going to call us a standard, but <laughs> that's I, I'll do. save it for yeah, I'll I'll write write a blog. <laughs> <laughs> that's why it's not right. That's the SAT. It doesn't stand for anything. That's but it is a standardized it. test, though. It, even though it doesn't stand for anything. I had this. Your things that I don't understand. Yeah. And, and we simply take the PSAT it, to, to It matters how well you do on your first question. Yeah, just proportionately. <laughs> to get our kids to be able to apply for merit scholar, right? Like that's the only that's one. I, I say that because it's, I had always heard this rumor and, and, and my daughter did not take both um, the SAT and the ACT, but we had my son take the ACT because the way it was explained to me that 80% of the kids <laughs> have similar scores on the test between the SAT and ACT. 20% plus right. you do better on one than the other and my son when you convert his act score to the sat scored 190 points higher which is significant yeah, significant. Mm -hmm. yeah. so it just it just was yeah whatever that's not the only we take it because um, it is a good benchmark it does give us a lot of data back yeah. um and and it helps and, and it students helps get scholarships yeah, yeah that's what right. I, but that's like not that the sole i appreciate it because it's practice for my own yeah. kids yeah. like all the kids but i would think it must impact the future like i was glad they got a chance to try the online one based because it doesn't matter what i think the psat performance so i yeah. think 
you know, starting ninth grade, depending on your performance in the PSAT, you'll start getting mailers from colleges, including like, yeah. encouraging you to apply and noting how much money you might get from them, which is, yeah, I don't know. I was a first generation college student. That was very helpful for me. <laughs> okay. Um, anything else? That's, um, our, our presentation next week is supposed to be uh, test score and JSLA. Um, that's now tentative based on Lincoln is now confirming all of our data, so we don't want to, we don't want to present it until we have it all locked down in Lincoln. So if it's supposed to come through any day now, if it comes through, we'll present it. If not, we'll hold that up until November. I just wanted to um, really talk about because well, we have our our. Our, I was really thinking that this was the action meeting. I don't know why. <laughs> but we have our school board convention, which I was like, oh, next week. It's not. It's in two weeks. Ago. But um, And Mr. Klaus went on a convention recently, which he said was a little um, unique. Yes. And, and I, I just thought you could talk about that. Uh, so, so I went out. I was out in um, out, out the convention. It was uh, AA, AASA, which is our superintendent's national group. Um, it was a focus group. So they had 50 superintendents around the country. And when you got there, you were grouped with 10 superintendents of similar school size. So we had about 3,000 kids. But uh, we had Haddonfield and we had Berkeley Heights in New Jersey, which is government high school. That's Haddonfield, center of state. But we also had a superintendent from two from Nebraska. One was his school was in the middle of a cornfield, two and a half mile road in and out, 25 minute ambulance or police to get there. So it's very scary that way. The woman in western Nebraska, she had twice while we were there had to go to shelter in place because moose had wandered onto the campus and they're very dangerous animals. Um, the, the gentleman who is the superintendent from um, Dallas County in Alabama, which is Selma, um, who still has window air conditioners in his school buildings, um, 2023 in Alabama. 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 Um, and, and one of the other people was uh, she was from Detroit on Eight Mile, which is you've seen yep. Eminem. Yeah, it's very, so, so it was a very different group, but we would go and it was vendor sponsored so it cost they paid for everything it cost us like two it cost us this was like 200 hours but you would go and sit with the vendor and they would ask you questions and, and we would talk and they just took notes like when i first saw them like oh we had to buy a, a timeshare when i come home um, <laughs> but it wasn't that it was actually 10 superintendents talking exchanging ideas how do you do safety how do you do this what do you do with transportation um and then vendors took notes based on their products because they're, they're developing new products and they're, develop, they're, they're modifying their products. And I, I've already been, I mean, first time I've come back, we've, I've been texting, asking questions of these people because we, we have similar challenges and some very dissimilar challenges because um, I have air conditioning. Um, <laughs> but, but it was a really fascinating piece. And it was something I really enjoyed. And I, I would certainly look to go to another focus group like that as opposed to other more traditional conferences. It was, it was a lot of very informative. Um, so that was good. Yeah, it was 103 yeah. degrees, but that's yeah. <laughs> okay. Um, so we're going to talk about the um, follow-up discussion on the mission statement, which Mike had sent out. Mm -hmm. uh, so she stream Meg's not here too, but she and Mike. Oh, yeah. Yeah. You already kind of take. take yeah. Why don't you take? Yeah. So we Meg and I took that on. And we, we got together and took the original statement, which was four sentences long, I remember we discussed this as the last board meeting, and we we created two much shorter versions of it. And um, kind of what we were shooting for, um, I have a friend who works for the VA, um, and he doesn't know anything about mission statements and stuff like that, but his, their mission statement is to serve those who serve our, serve our country, and he lives this. It, like it means so much to him. So that was kind of our North Star. We were trying to get something that that really meant something and was 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 memorable, stuff like that. So we came up with two, we gave it to Chuck. Chuck socialized it with some of his administration team. Um, and they had some feedback on it. And Katie Russo, right? She actually rewrote it um in a nice way. And then uh I meant that. Positively, um, <laughs> and then we got back together with Chuck, and we tweaked it a little more. So, kind of where we went was, and, and we also took into account the feedback that we got from 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 the community and stuff. But I don't know if I want to read the original to you guys, but it's just read the final. Yeah. The final so the, the final is, and I promise you, 
I would challenge you to find something in the original that's not in this. Um, but it, where we've landed is um, inspire academic excellence, foster lifelong learning, and empower our students to become contributing members of the global community. I love it. I think you summed up everything in the original. I, I read the end first to say, is there anything I immediately feel is missing? And then I looked up above and you're right. I don't see anything. I think you guys hit it out of the ballpark. Everybody who worked on it. Fantastic. I agree. I agree. Mm -hmm. right. And it is something. I think one of the things was you want people be able to remember it and say it, right? That is something we could remember. And, right. and enact it. It's all it's it's really just it's three things to remember. Yes. It's academic excellence, lifelong learning, and then contributing member of global community, yeah. mm -hmm. which doesn't limit it to somebody could be super academic, somebody could be super, you know, professionally high achieving, somebody else could have a different goal yeah, of it's, it's, it's all yeah. encompassing. It, it really is. I yeah. I like it. Nice job. Yeah, can I cool. just, Oh, yeah, yes. go ahead. Are there yeah. typos? Yeah. Did you? No, no. <laughs> I can give something no different. typos, but I do think it's not really, like, we either need to add just a we in front would be yeah. fine. Hadfield School District inspires. Yeah, that, that so either the Hadfield School District inspires or we inspire, whatever. I would rather do we just yeah. in terms of. Can you mean the word short? <laughs> what? No, it's just, it's more actionable. It's like a more active voice as opposed to. You know, uh, in, if it said we in uh, Haddonfield inspires, it's a it's it's, it's kind of present tense. Yeah. It's not yeah. forward thinking. So like yeah, we inspire. Yeah. I like the we. So my one other thought, which mm -hmm. you guys can, whatever. Huh. I like often maybe because our first one was so long, but we would say we nurture, we inspire, we empower. And I liked those three words. I did miss nurture. And I and foster just doesn't stand on its own that well. So but maybe this is short enough that you'll never just say we inspire, foster, and empower. You know what I mean? But I love the word nurture. To me, to me, I wasn't focused on the verbs of foster and empower. Yeah. To me, it was the lifelong learning. And then I love the contributing member yeah. global like I didn't. Yeah, so I mean, it's short enough that maybe it, it doesn't make a difference, and I think it, it is so much better than the original. Nice and, nice and concise, but that was the only word that kind of stuck out. Would you, would you, and I don't know that it works, but you could replace foster with nurture. So you nurture okay. lifelong learning instead of foster lifelong learning. I, I won't yeah. fight it, but I think you nurture students, you don't nurture lifelong yeah, learning. I, you yeah, encourage a, lifelong yeah. learning yeah. or yeah, because we nurture, and the oh, original it was nurture and unique abilities, which makes more sense. Mm -hmm. I didn't know that nurture was the word that we needed. I just fostered. Just kind of, you know, yeah, because we nurture every learner in the first one. So I don't, mm -hmm. I, I don't think nurture like long learning. It just sounds, it sounds a little like yeah. contrived. Mm -hmm. But yeah. I also think it's okay to drop it. Yeah. I think if, I don't know, as much as I like it, I'm sure there were other people in the community for whom it felt like an overstep. Yeah, that's true. Role. But foster like, nurture just sounds so warm. Foster does mean to encourage or promote the development of. So you're, or how about encourage instead of foster? I like encourage. I kind of like foster. I don't know. Foster custody, I think, puts the word in a. I don't know. I, I mean, foster custody is a great thing. I like foster people, too, but, but like, I don't know if we're splitting hairs. I, yeah, I feel like it's <laughs> splitting hairs here. Good job. Okay. Because the difference between foster and encourage is encourage is you, weaker. Yeah. yeah. Go for it. You you're like you, you don't create it when you encourage it. Yes. When, yeah. when you foster it, you are the you you are, are, and you are, you're and it's it's evolutionary. Encourage is more of a well, well, yeah. yeah. Whereas well, foster is you're teaching the skills necessary for lifelong learning. As opposed to just saying you should be a lifelong learner. Develop. <laughs> I'll shut I, I, develop's a good word. I'm not against that. We can also just mull it over. Yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 That's a better idea. So I, I think one of the things that so based on this, we would then start, okay, what would our measurable goals yeah. about this look yes. like? Right? That yes. would be the next step. So um we can mull this over, but you know, we have a reorg in January. Um and so the question would be do we want to try to get 
all of this in place in Jan you know, for, for January approval of the rework of our new emission statement. Um, and it builds walls over that. I think that'd be great. Yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. I think so too. Any other um, comments? Yeah, I mean, just repeat, great job, because that's, yeah, it like, is. people can laugh about splitting hairs, but when you get so many people involved yeah. and you got to come up with yeah. the words, it, it actually is a very difficult task. <laughs> Look at what just happened over one word. I know. No, I know. Yeah. 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 Take the entire I know. thing. No, no, no. I need to get We're here. We're here. Okay, any other comments on the mission statement? All right, we have a plan going forward for um, what that's going to look like. So uh, we'll open public comments. Members of the community are invited to speak for up to three minutes at this time. If you'd like to make additional comment, please wait until each person has had a chance to make their initial statement. All comments must be directed towards the board, not members of the public. According to our bylaws, comment session can last no longer than one hour. This is an opportunity for the board to listen, but not debate issues or enter a question and answer period. Please be aware that not all issues brought up before a board meeting will be resolved that evening. We ask you to identify your, yourself by stating your name, the name of your, and the name of your street before making your comment. While public education can be an emotional itch issue, we strive to maintain a certain level of decorum. Public meetings are, are um, streamed. I still haven't figured out how I'm going to word that. I need you to help boards with that. <laughs> And students often participate in meetings. As such, citizens are expected to maintain a tone of courtesy and civility. Um, any public comments? Okay, seeing no public comments, we'll go on to the agenda. Um, it is not the voting session, so I'm not going to be reading them all. So we'll just go through each section. Questions on governance. Yes. Um, I am hoping that we can have another sort of update on class size because I am already hearing from folks who are distraught that they're being told that they're on wait lists for entering first grade when they registered for kindergarten by the date. I, I would like, um, can we see that printout like maybe next week? Uh, sure. One of the yeah, I just think the enrollment data is a really key piece, and while we're reviewing class size, it makes sense. Maybe a handout. Can we do like a physical handout? Because that might be nice. I mean, I don't know if people yeah, are here. Sure. We, we can take our so we'll the the one issue one. Out we can available comments. So. Yeah, and just have an update of if that's you know, are we already oversubscribed for first grades at various schools, and if so, by how much? Um, that's, that's not great. I would modify that she could take teachers' names off of it. Yeah. Um, oh, yeah. No, just what, what about the one that just has like first grade, second yep. grade, third grade? You know, the the in my school. What's that? I feel like you added a PowerPoint now. I go like take out first grade yeah. right now. Yeah, well, but if I get updated now, one is part of the board that has the teacher's name. You know, around. We'll just do that one. We'll take the public one. Take that part off. Yeah. That's but the, just the grade, I think, right? Like five grade levels that you're yeah. in. Five grade level and like, I How think many? especially, and hopefully grade level in school. this will fade out as um, kindergarten becomes a thing in district, but a significant number of our students are going out of district for kindergarten and then are very frustrated to try and come in. Um, so that's just... Uh, yeah, we'll, have, we'll have that stuff for you. I think addressing that is important. <laughs> so, um, if I can jump, I had a question on student fundraising. Mm -hmm. So, I, I think I might be stating the obvious here, but I just wanted to confirm when you scroll down to the bottom of page one, and there's option one <laughs> and option two, and there's two X's by option one. That's what we're picking, correct? Yes. So, option two, we're not picking at all. Oh, no, we're picking up. Option one and two, because it says include. Yeah. So, here's Here's my question about option two. The sentence reads, students may solicit and collect money on behalf of non-school organizations, provided that the superintendent or designee has approved the fundraising. My concern, in my mind, and tell me if you guys see it differently, but like if Haddonfield Youth Soccer that is not a school activity wants to fundraise door to door, in my mind, that's not our business. It's not our purview. I think that's at the what whatever club fair is going on. We're selling 
the art program or, or whatever is, or, no, it's probably a better example, or raising money for a flood somewhere. Or the cancer. The like, cancer like, like, how like all the, year, the, the, the classes. Alice's Lemonade, class, Alice's yes. Lemonade fundraisers in our school through a club. Yeah. That's not a school, fun, that's not, that doesn't benefit the school that fundraising. No, but this isn't about the benefit uh, Okay. School sanctioned door -to -door activity. activity. I, I like that wonder, would be so. So my, my my thought, and you guys can do with the way you want, but I I know I would I would just reword that sentence a little bit to make it clear that it's um, you know student organizations may solicit and collect money like student like or school organizations may solicit because you're not talking about outside organizations. You're talking about students raising money for other. It just seems like it seems like it's all encompassing that you're. If I'm the only one who reads it that way, it just seems yeah, I, like I, like I you're reaching out them. to all. Yeah, yeah I, I feel like the word students covers what you're saying. So if you're if you're at soccer and you're doing a soccer fundraiser, then I students. feel like you'd be a soccer player, but you're not doing it as a student. You're doing it as a so soccer here. Let, let me read this. Do you know what I'm saying? Let's let's fill this in. Students may solicit and collect money on behalf of the Cancer Association, provided that superintendent or designee has approved the fundraising. So they can sit at arts in the court, courtyard and they can they can solicit and collect money on behalf of the American Cancer Association, provided that the superintendent or someone knows that they're doing it and says that it's I, okay. I want the superintendent or designee to know mm -hmm. when it's our students with the school organization. When I just read it, it seemed like, right, if we have students playing for Haddonfield Youth Soccer, mm -hmm. the youth soccer may say, or the Boy Scouts may say, let's go door to door selling wreaths. So to me, they're still students. They're just with a different organ. That's where I read it differently. Oh, I see what you're saying. Do you I see think what it, I it's I'm students playing for Team. Like we're talking. Yeah, that's my point. Is that if it's a school organization, it's not just students. But, but that was separate. Change. The door to door was separate. Like the. But I guess yeah, just thinking if you are, let's say that you are a student, and you are also involved in an outside organization, does your participating in a fundraising event for them conflict with this policy? And I know and we're saying it doesn't, it, but she's saying it that it kind of sounds like. Yeah. It that's all I'm saying. Like at least that's how I read it. You guys are kind of be but... modified by like on school grounds during school hours to make it clear that it's it, that's it's not, not no because if you you take what happens in high school for for the, the um, you know their spirit weeks that every grade has hard. yeah they're they're out fundraising for their charity so I personally would reword it if you guys don't think that it reads funny. You know, it just, I didn't read it that way the first time, but I understand what you're saying. It just seems or like what I read a very it, learning it sentence, like, like notwithstanding the foregoing, nothing in this policy is intended to yeah. imply that the yeah. superintendent yeah. should provide it. That yeah. when we, when we use student policy all the time, right. and when we use student, we're talking about when they're functioning as our student, not that's their identity as a, as a, as a human being. So that's I understand what you're true. saying because it's like. They're yeah. students, but, but you'd have to come up with like there were no other policies that made it seem like I mean to me, because you're saying students, they're students when they play soccer or when they're Boy Scouts. I would just say um, school organizations may solicit and collect money on behalf of non-school organizations. Because but that way that school, yeah, well, yeah, and even like, like, like well, the dress the code I says know. students. Right, right. From what I have remembered, the dress code says students, but of course we're not covering their dress code out of school. That, that sentence is mirroring the sentence above where it says option one. That's why it's structured that way. So the sentence above says students may solicit collect money for approved school organizations. And then we're also saying students can collect, solicit and collect money for right above option one. Not right school above organizations one. if you or your designee approves. Like it's supposed to be mirroring that because of all the options in there. I feel like it reads weird. Like I wonder if we just need to. But the sentences it. closer together so it like makes sense. Right. Like yeah, it's too far away. We can, we can look at the word this yeah. clear. Yeah. 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 Um, yeah, I think it was just on behalf of non-school organizations. That part too. I thought, what if you're a Boy Scout raising money for the Boy Scouts? That's how I read it. What if you're a Boy Scout or what if you're a soccer player raising money for youth soccer? I thought, why does our superintendent have to approve yeah. that? Yeah. Which no, wasn't the intention. It's how I read it. Yeah, yeah I understand what you're saying. 
right. Any other questions on governance? All right, curriculum and instruction. I like the new format Me for too. the um, curriculum maps. And um, and they're comprehensive. I thought yeah. they did you know, oh, a nice job. Work. Yeah. Well, they, and they may already be, will they be on the website? You're smiling at me like, I'm, gonna, I'm not giving me anything to provide. I'm just curious. <laughs> <laughs> I asked the question, and he starts like, what's she going to help me with? <laughs> That, that, that was not the implied message from my advocate. I'm sorry. Uh, yes, yes, yes. Once once they are approved, they will be on the new district website for. Thank you. All right, just curious. Is there a reason? Actually, it's currently on the website. Right, they're in there. Because we established a curriculum review website. Yes, you're right. So I forgot about that. All is there a reason my third grade's not on there? The third grade that they done. We're we're, we're, Still we're this out. this is like round one Got it. of many. Um, so this is the work we're still working on the others. Oh right, so and I'm seeing too like sixth grade, grade is just ELA. That's yeah, fine. Yeah, yeah. It, it, this, this also, big thumbs up on foundations in uh, okay, third grade. Great, Loving great. it. Yeah, uh, Loving it. <laughs> we we don't anticipate this project being fully completed, meaning the, re the revision and reformatting of all our uh, curricula uh, for probably a year from now. No, they'll take a survey. Personnel. I was wondering what E referenced, including a parent teacher conference. Someone else is doing it. It just that seemed weird to me, but I'm sure there's. He's a long term. Oh, so long term. Okay, job good. somewhere else, so he's leaving. Yep. Okay. Um, so, so he's, he's coming back to, back to do this. Got it. Okay. Because I was like, I don't understand. <laughs> I, I had the same question, yeah. Rachel. <laughs> Makes sense. Okay. And business and finance. I I have a question, but I have to it. Uh, I already had it pulled up. Let me find it. Um, so this is my question. Uh, um, I'm trying to remember what SNJP, the perinatal, whatever that stands for, South Southern New Jersey perinatal is a consortium. Cooperative. Cooperative. Okay. Um, are we responsible as a public school district paying for students in non-public schools? Yes. Because yes, yes, read... the funding flows through us. Oh. Okay. We receive funding from the state to pay for this. It okay. Doesn't come out of our school. Right. Okay. Yeah, so we're like a pass-through entity. For once, I wasn't the one to ask that question. <laughs> <laughs> Thanks, Heather. It's always a good thing to remind people because I think in the public, when you see this, yeah, too, you're like, huh? it's like, why? Are I know we had to do it for that. lunch. I just didn't know yeah. we had to do it for this because when I read it, I thought, why are we responsible? But you're getting reimbursed. Mm -hmm. And um, okay, the minutes. The only thing I wanted to bring up um, in general in the minutes, not to make it more work, but something to consider. I just, and there was a period of time when we started it and then it fell off. And you guys can say whether you think it's good or not. I questioned if you want to put attendance on the executive sessions. Sometimes people are subpoenaed to be witnesses, and then it's nice to just have a record of who was there and who wasn't there because if it isn't, you can't remember. Then it's not there. Not on executive session. It's on. I, I, I'm, I'm asking. It usually is on yeah, executive session. Yeah, I think it wasn't on this one. Well, oh, when, it was when I looked, it, it wasn't on there. It was, it was on the regular session, mm -hmm. but not executive session. Yeah, I started that. Yeah, well. Yeah. Was this the one where I was listed even though I wasn't there? No, that's the like thing. I have to reopen it. I can check right now. No, so it's there's no regular. attendance listed on there. No. But is exact on the regular agenda? When I, when I open up B, 5B, it's not on there, but maybe. No. Yeah, there should be. Oh, I see. It is on the regular agenda. Yeah. Okay. Uh, okay. That's right. Okay. You made it good, good. Okay. Thank you. I, I just noticed looking on the paper, but if it's, you don't have to put yeah. it in two places. It works. Is there any? Any errors? I'll I'll take responsibility. I I, I was not the best secretary. Oh, yeah. oh, 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 you would love to ask. Well, you were tough about it. No, that's not even your meeting. So it's all good. Where's your? There's like three people in one room. <laughs> <laughs>
Yeah. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, nice. Yeah. Well. And you did well. Yeah. 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 You let Chuck and I know about Troy. Yeah. He's just super efficient. Yeah. Anything for future consideration? We talked about the mission statement and our plan for that. Um, I think we want. I'd... It's awkward. Um, <laughs> My son is supposed to get, is it that meeting um, for the merit? That's next week, yes. Oh, okay. We haven't been notified, so that Shani asked me to I'll solve, I'll make sure they ask. <laughs> I couldn't possibly come up with a way to ask him. It wasn't awkward as hell, so there you go. All right. I'll, I'll double check with Shani. Congrats to him. Oh, yeah. yeah. Thanks, He's a freak. Yeah, anything else? All right. Um, Thank you so Motion to adjourn the meeting. Yeah. Lynn. Okay. Go. Yeah. Go. 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 Go.